Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, just some highlights and a recap of the Kelowna gathering we had on June 30th. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we did do an audio. Uh, we have about an hour and a 12 minute segment of the gathering. However, uh, for divine reasons, at this time at least we're unable to share that with you i made several attempts there and worked on it for perhaps close to an hour uh, however uh for some reason yet not given to me uh, i just cannot share that at this time uh i cannot guarantee that we can in the future uh it, it was a uh, an hour and 20 12 minutes, a great discussion, and I know you would love it, so if the time's right in the future, uh, perhaps Helen or someone can find a way that we could share it. Uh, so just let you know that from the Kelowna one, we did have an hour and a 12-minute audio of it. The meeting was much longer, of course, but uh, yeah, some interesting things in that. So that may come in the future or it may not. Have no expectations, please. Uh, also with that, uh, I did have a 20 minute video, uh, what I did where I set the computer up right by eye where I was speaking and recorded the first 20 minutes of that gathering. However, what occurred in there is you could only hear I speaking and the other ones were close by, but they're barely audible and, uh, you know, we sort of perhaps maybe had a microphone. We didn't have it. That didn't work. So I don't even feel at this time that uh, it's any benefit to share that 20-minute video. It's essentially just saying things I was of uh, going over, just welcoming people and uh, what we were doing and the others uh, was a little bit about yourself, but as I said, it's very, barely audible, so you may not even hear it. So, having said that, I'm doing this live, you know, as a highlight of what occurred there and some info. So, at the Kelowna gathering, we had three others besides us. So, at that time, Daphne was with us, and uh, we had a team of four. So, there were uh, seven altogether and Daphne it's possible maybe rejoining us in the future somewhere down the road just to let you know uh, however uh, she had uh, before we attended the Kimberly meeting she decided she wanted to, we were in a beautiful spot in nature and she wanted to stay there for a few days and do some more work on herself whatever that was so that was great um, so, so uncertain, I just got some notes down, uh, you know, if we can share that 112-minute audio. But a couple highlights with that surrounding, uh, even before we had, uh, got to the Kelowna uh, gathering at that time, I, I did have uh, other individual uh, one-on-one -on -one gatherings with a few there was a uh, uh, two amazing ladies in princeton and uh, uh had uh, we had uh you know quite a great conversations as always with two of those and uh we had anticipated they would have been joining but uh however the way things played out they did not make it uh, however also uh, so leading up to the Kelowna gathering, um, there was also a lady in a laundry mat. And if I ever put out the audio, you can uh, perhaps uh, hear where I share a little bit about that story. Uh, actually, Sharon and I had met her in the laundry mat, uh, I believe on Saturday. We did the Kelowna gathering on Sunday. And uh, this lady, uh, she had, I, I let her know where the gathering was at. However, she did not uh, uh, attend as well. Perhaps she was working. Uh, uh, I'm uncertain of what uh, trend 
fires there. Uh, however, she had uh, amazing stories to share uh, in the laundromat prior to the gathering uh, about her being a skier and uh, and uh, but also interactions with uh, the galactics and seeing ships and uh, she also had a friend uh, if I understood it correctly. Uh, she had a friend, uh, and this is around the Lone Butte, 70 mile, 100 mile house area of, uh, of British Columbia. And there's a lot of uh, uh, interdimensional activity, uh, galactic, UFO activity, whatever you wish to call it, around that area. So it's very high. It, 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 it's an ongoing thing, and uh, many. Uh, in that area are very knowledgeable of it, have had many great experiences. However, you know, some of these experiences are so profound that uh, because of the societal restraints upon one, if, you know, they speak openly and truly about their experiences, that they may be labeled nuts. So uh, not much is said. However, when you get into the community, if you will, or even uh, connect with someone that is there, you uh, you began to get the very uh, uh, beautiful and real stories that are not released, uh, you know, more or less to the public because of the ridiculous societal restraints that we are break, breaking down. However, without rambling on too much about that, if I understood correctly, this lady, uh, she had also mentioned that one of her friends had uh, on video uh, interactions with actual what they called ETs inside of the coast and had them recorded. Uh, however, I believe he only ever showed one person her about it. So that was a, an amazing story to share with you. Uh, she did not attend the gathering. However, again, I, I just wish you know to share with you how there are so many stories out there that have not come to light yet with individual experiences. So it's very great. And uh, as I said, you know, with the gathering, uh, what I and the team are doing is not only uh, just have the gathering like the one every weekend or however we're uh, with ones on a one-on-one -on -one basis in between those times as uh, divinity dictates that it should be too. Uh, one of the highlights, another, well, there's always highlights, of course. Uh, another highlight is, uh, uh, so at the Kelowna gathering, we had a lady that uh, uh, she had saw a huge ship over Kelowna, I believe, uh, maybe around back in 2005, 2006. Uh, but it was also interesting because I believe uh, Jen Peters, that was uh, part of the Rio Angels in the time, uh, I recall her sharing that she had seen you know, years ago, perhaps maybe that time might have been 2011 or it may have coincided at the same time. And if I remember correctly, what Jen Peters had shared, it was... Uh, she had witnessed a ship over the lake of Kelowna as well, and I believe her partner. Uh, so it was very interesting, a, a huge ship. And in the audio, you can hear the lady that, uh, you know, the lake in Kelowna, uh, width-wise, is perhaps maybe, uh, you could say, a, at least a half a mile wide. So this ship was massive, and uh, she saw it come down, and she saw, like, the portals or the windows or whatever in it. So just to let you know, uh, she shared a bit of that, and uh, which was great. Uh, okay, what else we have here? Uh, also, in the audio, if I get it out, you will hear uh, the the day leading up before that as well, uh, when the team was together, Daph fully uh, together then, Daphne, Helen, I, and Sharon, there was an incident that occurred where uh, Daph had a slight uh, uh, physical pain in her butt, but what happened is that 
Uh, Sharon had begun to feel it. I had begun to feel it uh, at different times. Because when you become all one as well, and you're you're so connected and physical, sometimes uh, you will feel, you know, other sensations or pains from others. But this is also very indicative of the empathic abilities, how you take pain from others in the healing procedures and modalities as well. But this was a, a total clear indication, you know, with several witnesses, I, Sharon, and Daphne, you know, just sharing what we felt and putting it all together, but it was showing a much deeper uh, energetic connection between us. And when it occurred, Sharon and I were laying, Sharon and I are divine uh, partners in the union at this time. Uh, we were laying in bed uh, that night before the Kelowna meeting, and uh, Daphne had felt the pain. You know, we were assisting in whatever way before that, but uh, while Sharon was laying there, she began to think about Daphne's pain. And uh, I, unbeknownst to I, I did not know what Sharon was thinking at that time. Uh, a pain went very quickly at the center of my leg out of nowhere and it was not mine and uh so i believe the way it went i quickly said wow here and i said did you feel anything and uh i believe she elaborated yeah she said i felt a pain go up my leg and i said what were you thinking of just now she said well i was thinking about daphne and uh, about uh you know the pain that she had in uh upper leg and inner butt like which is uh, indicative of sciatica uh, with the sciatic nerve so it, it become very uh, indicative then that you know just because of uh, the closeness of Sharon and I in the divine union that uh, even what she would think uh, could be translated into the physical as well as the sensation so we shared that together, and, and again, as, as we all become one and back interconnected, what you are going to be finding is that, as I said, there's many new things to come. And you must remember that when you say we are all one, that it means a whole lot more and that you will and may be getting sensations beyond anything that you ever uh you know imagine because we are creating the new and we are transcending out of the old lower dimensions and to do that uh everything with us changes in the new and usually you're given the experience then the information of what it is uh but you're given that experience and information to integrate it into the new timelines as we construct the new high 5D timelines, which are much more magical and each one of you much more powerful. And also this is how we, you can look at it two ways, how we change this now where we're at, this dimension, or how we create the new that we transition into. So, you know, there's several, several different perspective of that um so and uh <laughs> one thing i wrote down which is very cool so i was listening you know to the audio uh this morning i said it went for approximately 112 minutes and maybe 43 or 53 seconds so when i was just near the end uh if i ever get the audio out you can hear me speaking 